Hello guys and welcome to this video. Today in this video we are gonna make a recommendation system using concept known as cosine similarity. So for this video what I have did is collected my own data from IMDB. So you might be wondering how I collected data from IMDB. So what I have done is scraped the site using Scrapy. So guys if you don't know I just recently made a video on Scrapy in which I showed how you can use Scrapy and in that I showed how you can scrap Amazon website. So if you haven't seen this video, what I'll do is give a link in the description. Make sure to watch this video and understand how you can use Scrappy for web scrapping. And if you are new to our channel, make sure you subscribe it. All right, without wasting much time, let's start a video. So for first few minutes, what I'll show is how I scraped data from a Scrappy. So what I've done is scrapped data from this site. So let us go and visit to this site. So guys what I've done is collected data from this site. As you can see all the US released movies in between 1972 to 2016. So from this site what I've scrapped is the name of the movie. I'll just keep it here. So let's see what I've scrapped from this site. So first I've scrapped is the movie name. Then I took here in which the movie was released. Then the directors and the cast that is this section, this section, then what I've done is taken the time or the length of the movie. Then I have taken the tags, the tags are here, then the stars, then I have taken the score that is the meta score, then a small description of that movie, then total votes or the total they earned from this movie and what I've done is in items.py that is this I have mentioned the fields that I'm going to scrap those were the same as I said before name your director's cast and etc. So if you have seen that video you will understand why I've done that basically it is to structure our data then what I've done is scrap the data up to 101 pages. Now guys let's see how we got our data after scraping. So what I'll do is open a Jupyter notebook. So guys after scraping make sure that you store data in some CSV or JSON format. So you can use it later. So what I've done is store data in JSON format. So if we see our book one. Now in the book one what I've done is imported pandas and and I've imported RE. RE is nothing but regex. You'll understand why I've used regex in this. So what I've done is I've read data using pandas read underscore json function and stored it in data f that is data frame. Now if we see our head part of data as you can see we got a movie name year, movie director's cast, movie time, movie tags, the stars, movie score, the small description of the movie, then movie votes and total and movie total. So guys as you can see here there is a small problem. So what is that problem as you can see for every data that we have collected we have got some we have got some square brackets as you can see we got our movie name in square brackets even the year directors. So almost everything we got is in square brackets. So we can't use this data right we have to do cleaning on this data. Now in movie here you can see that there are square brackets with normal brackets. So what you can see is data is not clean. So the regex is used to clean our data. So what I'll do is try to clean all this data. So what I've done is let's see first we'll see how we can clean a name that is a movie name. So what I've done is written a list comprehension. And let's see what is saying. So for every movie in data frame dot movie name. So what I am considering is all these movies. So wherever you see a square bracket replace it with nothing for every movie. Okay. And this is in list comprehension and I'll store it in new column known as name. Now similarly what I'll be doing is wherever I see a closing square bracket. What I'll do is replace it with nothing for every movie in a data frame. So in some movies there were some irrelevant characters. 
So what I've done is also replaced it with nothing using list comprehension and regex. So after cleaning, as you can see, we got a data frame of name. So what I had done is made a new column for that. And as you can see, the data is now clean. There are no square brackets around it. And yeah, guys, 9,936 data was collected from the site. As you can see, that is our last count. So yeah, guys, now what I'll do is similarly clean the next column of a data frame. So the next column, as you can see, it is here. And it also have some square brackets with some normal brackets. So what I'll do is the same thing using regex. So for every movie or for each movie in data frame of movie year, what I'll do is wherever you see all these brackets, replace it with nothing. And yeah, guys, it's again a list comprehension. And there were also some unwanted characters in that year. So also I have replaced it with nothing. So as you can see, we got a cleaned year. There are no square brackets or normal brackets around it. Now similar thing, what I'll do is for all features using regex and list comprehension, it's very easy. And I'll give this notebook and data set in the repository. So guys, basically what I've done is clean that data frame using regex and I've stored this clean data frame into a CSV file and I have removed the old features from it. So as you can see, we created a data.csv that is now our data is clean and I have stored it in data.csv. Now if we see our clean data, as you can see there are no brackets around it first of all. Now what we can infer is that data is clean and now we can use it. Now let's go to our second notebook in which we'll try to create a recommendation system using cosine similarity. And in that I'll explain how cosine similarity works. All right guys, now we are in our second notebook. And in this notebook, we'll see how we can make a recommendation system. So as you can see in the first line, what I'll do is import pandas. Then we saw that how we cleaned our data, which we got from our JSON file. And then we stored it in CSV. So what I'll do is import that CSV here and I'll execute it. Now let's see the head part for it. Now what we'll do is instead of seeing the shape of name, what we'll do is see the whole shape of our data set. What I'll do is data set dot shape. So as you can see, we have 9937 rows and 10 columns or 10 features. Now, if I see the info of our data set, we can see that there are some null values in score and there are some null values in your time in almost all the features. But we won't require those features. So what I'll do is, so what we'll do is we won't treat them or we won't handle this missing values. Now, the most important step what I'll do is for cosine similarity, we'll make a new feature and in that feature what we'll do is keep the name of the movie then the directors and cast of that movie and the tags that are associated with that movie. Tags are nothing but genre we can say and we'll do this for each and every movie and store it in new column that is our IMP column and we'll return that data set. So I'll just execute it. Now what we'll do is pass our data set in this function and this function returns a data set. As you can see, this is nothing but a data set. So we'll get a data set and I'll execute it. So as you can see, it has executed. Now if we see our data, I'll write. Now if we see our head part of data, let's see what we get. So as you can see, we got a new feature that is IMB feature. In this feature, we have a movie name, then directors and cast, and the tags with which it is associated. Or we can say it's genre. Now guys, what we'll do is assign ID for each of our movie. And we'll see why we are doing that in few minutes. So what, I'll, what I've done is written a simple comprehension saying that for i in range 0 to data dot shape that is at index 0 that is nothing but num how much number of rows. 
right so we'll get the ids from 1 to 9937 and we'll get a new column called as ids so what i'll do is execute it we can't use this text data right because machine don't understand text data so what we have to do is convert this text data into some form of vectors so to convert into some form of vectors there, there are several techniques like word to vec tf idf vectorizer then bag of words that is nothing but count vectorizer so you can use those but what i've done is used a tf idf vectorizer so guys in my password strength classifier video i have explained how a tf idf vectorizer works so if i just go back here so as you can see i have explained how a tf idf vectorizer works so you can go so if you want you can check this video and i'll make a instance of tf idf vectorizer known as vec and also i'll import numpy now we want the vectors of this column right because this is our important feature so what i'll do is there is a method in vectorizer known as fit underscore transform it takes the uh, important feature what i'll do is first execute this and it takes an important feature and we have to pass it in the form of string right so what we could have done is used a function to make it a string a numpy string but i have written a simple lambda function for it and i'll execute it now if we see the shape of our vectors so as you can see there are 9937 rows and 20994 columns that means here each word is a vector or we can say each word is represented in the form of vectors now what i'll do is import cosine similarity which is there in sklearn.matrix.pairwise and now we'll understand what is cosine similarity i'll just first execute this so guys cosine similarity and cosine distance is very simple concept we all have been studying this since our high school days what is sine cos tan or we can say sine cosine tangent so these are nothing but ratios now let us understand this in very simple terms so if i have let me draw a graph first suppose i have two points here point one and point two now what i'll do is join line passing point p1 and so these two lines makes an angle theta okay so we know that cos lies in range of minus 1 to plus 1 right and and we know that cos 0 is 1 and cos 90 is 0 now suppose in this example this theta here is 45 degrees so what we'll do is compute cos 45 degrees so guys cos 45 is 0 0.525 okay so that means these two points are 52 percent similar now instead of having 45 degrees what we'll do is i'll just erase this i have my two points here those are p1 and p2 now the angle between th these two is 90 degrees now we know that cos 90 is 0 so cos 90 is 0 now guys consider the other point suppose it is p3 so if you can see the angles between p2 and so, oops it is p3 so as you can see the angle between p3 and p2 is 0 so cos 0 is nothing but we know it is 1 so we can say it is 100% similar now if we see a formula for that it is nothing but dot product of two vectors divided by the euclidean norms of that or we can say magnitude of that vector again guys it is very easy now we'll go back to our jupyter notebook as you can see i have imported cosine similarity 
now in this what i'll do is pass my vectors and store it in a sim variable i'll just execute it now if we see the shape of a similarity vectors you can see it is nine same that means if we see a uh, if we see sim so guys if we see a shape of it the columns are nothing but the ids of that movie so and even rows are the ids of that movie now if you see suppose movie with id 4 would be similar to movie with id 4 right cuz it will contain same actor same name so it would be 100% similar so if i just write uh, instead of 2 what i'll do is 4,4 4. so as you can see they are 100% similar so it can be anything 100 comma 100 so that means two objects or two movies having same name basically the same movie are 100% similar now this function is very important again guys what I've done is see so what I'm doing here is taking the ID so what this function basically do is takes the input from the user and gives top end recommendations using cosine similarity so what I'm doing is taking the title of the movie from the user and here I'm getting the ID of that movie which is there in our database or we can say in a uh, CSV file because its value lies in index 0 and I'll store it in movie ID. Now what I'll do is enumerate it with uh, our similarity vectors right and we'll get our scores that means we'll get a column with respect to its movie ID. Now what I'll do is sort this values or we can say we'll sort this scores in descending order that is from big to small because we need the most similar content at the top and least similar content at, content at the bottom right so i've used sorted function here and again i have used a lambda function for this then what i've done is see the same movie would be 100 percent similar to itself as you can as you saw so what i have done is I have not included that so as you can see it is starting from index 1 right now see again I have written a list comprehension saying that for movies in sorted scores that is this scores that we got so from that what I am going to do is I will be taking the IDs from those movies and I will check if this ID is present in that movie and I will take the name of that movie if it's present I'll take the name of that movie so basically this square bracket acts as a filter and at the last what I'll do is return that movie we can see movies so I'll just execute it if you if you have any doubt what you can do is once again go you can rewind this video and it's basic python now again what I, what I'll be doing is writing a simple function to recommend only 10 movies because this function would recommend all the movies in descending order but we want only 10 movies from that so i'm making a empty list and i'll start the count from zero i'll iterate through all this movie list that we get from this uh, recommend function i'll append this movie that we get in our list and I'll return this list easy right so what I'll do is execute it again now it's time to test our recommendation system so I hope you guys have seen spider-man so if we give a spider-man to our recommendation system let's see what we get so as you can see we get spider-man 2 spider-man 3 then brothers so how this cosine similarity works is it finds something similar it finds something similar in that movies this can be this can be its name or the directors or cast in that movie or the genre of that movie right so it works basically like that
Now suppose if I write the ma matrix, I hope you you guys have seen it. The matrix again a very good movie. So as you can see the matrix reload revolutions again. Great movies. So in this way a cosine similarity recommendation works. So basically it finds something similar in that movie. So here it is uh, the matrix word is similar in this too, right? So this can be very useful when you don't have so much of data to work with or you don't have user matrix, right? If you don't know how user behaves or clicks per ratio. So initially you can work with this type of recommendation system. So yeah, that was it for today's video guys. I hope you liked it. If you guys have any issue, do let us know in our comment section. If you guys have learned something new, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel. I'll see you all in the next video. Till then, bye bye.